Today's story is about. There is no way we could guess because all the stories are imaginary. And I don't want to know who today's story is about until I hear it. I know, just try. I don't know. I just imagined a name. Sarab. Sarab. And who is she? Or he? The Sarab. I don't know. I just imagined a name like the writer did. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Mr. Abdo. Hmm. How are you all doing today? Very well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And how are your parents doing? They send their greetings, Mr. Abdo. Please give my salams to them too. All right then, let's start. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The first thing we say. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala al-Habibi Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Habibi Muhammad, the prophet of adults and children, Allah's messenger to Arabs and all nations. He brought us the Quran telling us the truest of tales and uncovering news from the world of the unknown and times long past. In today's story, my children, from the book Little Giants, the author imagined the story of a wizard's daughter. It was inspired from one of the Holy Quran stories revealed in more than one surah. The title of our story is The Ruby. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The wizard Hatun and his family were poor. They lived near the sea. Hatun did all he could to provide for his wife Asar and their children. He performed magic for a living. But magic was a very popular profession. There was great competition between magicians. Much like Hatun, most magicians were poor. A few were able to become rich but only by serving the Pharaoh. 
Ramis was Hatun's oldest child. Despite her young age, she understood exactly what her father did for a living. She did not like his job. She did not accept the fact that her father was making money by deceiving people. Ramis talked to her father many times, trying to convince him to quit his profession and to accept their luck in life and accept whatever fate brought, but to no avail. One day, Ramis went to her favorite spot on the seashore. She used to always sit there with her father and talk. She found her father sitting there, thinking, gazing, and wishing. Good evening, Dad. Huh? Oh, hi, honey. How are you? Do you want to see my latest magic trick? Hatun quickly stood up, took a rope out of his pocket, held it from the end, and then threw it on the ground right in front of Ramis. All of a sudden, the rope turned into a little snake, moving and twirling. Ooh, beware the poisonous snake! Ooh. Nice, Dad. But when are you going to quit tricking people with magic? Frustrated, Hatun picked up his rope. <sighs> How long are you going to keep bringing up this subject? I told you time and time again, I want you all to live a comfortable life. I will not stop trying until I get plenty of money. I want your mom to live comfortably. And I want you to have everything you wish for. But father, we would rather make a living from fishing than with money you earn from deceiving people. Oh. Listen, sweetheart. I don't want to be a fisherman like my father. The fisherman's life is nothing but hard work. All I really want is to get back some of what has been stolen from my father. Stolen from him? What do you mean, father? Oh, when I was young, my father found a big jewel in the belly of a fish. It almost got us out of poverty forever. But when he went to sell it in the market, the pharaoh's soldiers snatched it from him and took it to the pharaoh. He put it on a necklace, and he still wears it to this day. And how do you plan to get it back, father? I don't know. I don't know. But I must show the pharaoh how good I am. Maybe he'll give me a lot of money, and that will make up for what he's stolen from my father. Father, how long are you going to keep on trying? And why should you use poor people like us? Why should they pay the price for what the pharaoh did? Oh, stop asking so many questions, Ramis. Did you like the snake trick or not? I suggest you use another genie. The one helping you now is not convincing. <laughs> <laughs> Days later, Hatun opened the door to his home and rushed in as if he had found something he was searching for all his life. He was very happy. He was in a hurry and spoke hastily. Come on, come on, come on, Asar, come on, hurry, get the kids, get the kids ready, we, we, there's no time to waste, there's no time to waste, come on, quickly, 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 my bag of tricks, where's my bag of tricks, Who, I think I lost my bag of tricks, oh no, my bag of tricks, where's my bag of tricks, oh, Where's oh no. Where's this, Hatun, on your waist? Oh, whew, that was close, come on, Asar, let's go, let's go, let's go. Go where, Hatun, calm down. No, 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 no. There's no time for talking. We're no... We're What's poor. going no on, more. Father? What happened? This is what I have always been afraid of. Your father has gone insane, Ramos. What is this nonsense, Asar? I haven't gone mad. The Pharaoh! The Pharaoh invited all the wizards for a big challenge. He will reward us with a great deal of money if we win. Goodbye, poverty! And Hello, what is luxury. this challenge? Snakes! Snakes! The Pharaoh wants us to compete in the snake trick. And I am the best at it! Ha ha! Hatun's family takes off. After a few days, 
they reached the city competition day. People had already come from everywhere, all impatiently waiting for the start of the extraordinary contest the pharaoh had declared. Hatun started to look for a place where he could seat his family, but because of the large crowds, he could not find a spot. So he took them to a location high enough for them to watch from. There's not much time left. I have to leave you now. We'll be watching you from here, and we will wait until you come back. Do you promise me, father, this will be the last time? Yes, dear, I promise. Even if I don't win, I promise this will be the last time I do any magic tricks. I wish you luck, Hatun. Don't forget your promise, father. I won't forget, Ramis. Starting today, uh, no, I mean starting tomorrow, we're either rich or we live on fishing. All right, I'll see you. Good luck, Hatun. Good luck, father. Hatun rushed away, making his way through the crowds. As he was approaching the magician's gathering area, he dreamed and planned what he was going to do with all the money he was going to make from the competition of a lifetime. He imagined the big house he was going to build for his wife and kids next to Ramus's favorite spot on the beach. But first, he had to prove to the pharaoh how good and skilled he was. Hatun reached the arena a little late. He convinced the soldiers to let him join his fellow magicians. He looked around and saw the pharaoh sitting on his throne, arrogant and conceited. He saw hanging around his neck a necklace with a big, magnificent, beautiful jewel. There it is, my father's jewel. It really is beautiful. No wonder you stole it, you tyrant. If I get it back, I will desire nothing else in life. From afar, Asar and Ramis and the children were watching Hatun. Mother, look, up there. What? Where, Ramis? There, on the pharaoh's chest. What? Is that the jewel your father talks about? No doubt it is. No wonder he wants it back. Hatun started to look at the magicians around him. He noticed that all of them were standing on one side of the arena and only one man standing on the other side. He held in his hand a shepherd's cane. Hatun started to think to himself. Are we all here to challenge this one man? There must be something special about him. Is he the greatest wizard in the whole country? But he appears to be a good, wise man. Not one who deals with magic or sorcery. What is this all about? Hatun turned to a magician next to him and asked, Excuse me, who is that man? The magician was surprised by Hatun's question. He answered sarcastically, What? <laughs> you don't know who we are facing? Why are you here then? <laughs> Hatun was embarrassed for asking the magician. He decided not to ask another, fearing he might be kicked out of the competition. Then one magician called on the pharaoh. Oh great king, what will we be rewarded if we win? The pharaoh looked at the magicians with pride. If you win, you will be in my company, and I will grant you whatever you wish. At that moment, Hatun felt sudden courage and boldness that even he found surprising. My great king! 
I hunger for your generosity, benevolence, and aspire for your compassion. What do you want, magician? I desire the necklace on your chest. What? The crowds were shocked by Hatun's request. Asar and Ramus were afraid for Hatun's safety. The situation turned tense, and everybody kept silent until... <laughs> yes, yes. It is yours! <laughs> The crowds cheered for the pharaoh's generosity. But the pharaoh turned to one of his soldiers and whispered, After the contest is over and people leave, kill this fool. It has been agreed! The magicians will start! Let the competition begin! The crowd went wild. Their cheers were loud. The magicians threw their ropes and sticks on the ground. All transformed as people perceived into moving and twirling snakes. The crowds were thrilled. Can't see how he's gonna beat us. Our victory is ensured. Farewell, poverty. Goodbye and never come back. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. But everyone was taken by surprise when a big snake emerged, moving swiftly. It gobbled up all the ropes and sticks the magicians threw. The crowds were in shock. They were speechless. No one expected that one snake could eat all the other snakes. They were nothing but ropes and sticks that don't eat or move. It was just a trick. What's this, mother? How could a snake eat all the other snakes? Isn't the whole thing just a trick? But Asar did not answer. She too was shocked and surprised. I can't believe my eyes. It is a real snake. His stick transformed into a real snake. This cannot be. How could this happen? This is not magic at all. What's this? This is not magic. No, no. This is a real miracle. This can only be done by God. I believe in Allah Almighty. I believe in Allah Almighty. What? What are these magicians saying? Is they go insane or what? Suddenly, it was chaos. People started shouting. Some believed in Allah, and others did not. But all the magicians bowed down to Allah without hesitation or fear, including Hatun. The Pharaoh lost his mind. What's this? You believed in him without my permission. You were all in on it. In fact, he is your master. He taught you magic. It's a trick you all have played on me. I will kill you all. I will crucify you all on trees. I'll cut off your arms and legs. Guards, don't let them get out. Capture them all. Seize them. Tie them up. The magicians did not care for what the Pharaoh was saying. All of them knew that what was right was to believe in Allah alone. They all realized that dying as believers in Allah is better than all the bounties of this world. 
Hatun ran towards his wife and children. He wanted to tell them to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramis saw her father from a distance as he was trying to get closer to them. She took off running towards him, making her way through the crowds. Her mother tried to stop her, but Ramis was faster than her. Asar could not run after her because she had the children. Father! Father! Asar! Ramis! Where are you? Father! I'm here! Father! Where? Where are you, Ramis? My dear, where are you? Over here, Father! Hatun saw his daughter Ramis in the midst of the crowds trying to reach him. He ran towards her, trying to reach her. But the Pharaoh's soldiers blocked his way. Father! Ramis! Father! Allah is the true I God, Ramis! Father. Tell your mother! Allah Father! is the true God! Father! Father, don't leave us! Father! Don't worry about me, Ramis! Go don't back to your mother! Us. Take care of her and the children! Father! Tell her! I believe in Allah, the one! Did I not promise you this would be the last time? I've kept my word, my daughter! Go back to your mother! Hurry! Get out of here! Help her! Be good to her! And remind her always! La ilaha illallah! La ilaha illallah! The Pharaoh's soldiers took Hatun away. Ramus went back to her mother in a hurry to tell her Hatun's message. Asar picked up her kids. Afraid and sad, she escaped with her children. Asar and Ramus looked back. From a distance, they saw Hatun waving goodbye and telling them to keep on moving. He and his fellow magicians were surrounded by the Pharaoh's soldiers. Asar and Ramis knew that day it would be the last time they will ever see Hatun. Days and weeks passed by since Ramis, her mother, and the children returned to their home at the seashore. But their situation after their return was a lot different than before their trip. Now they are believers who believed in Allah, the one true God. But also a special member of the family was left behind and will never join them again. Hatun's memory never left their minds, not for a moment, especially for Ramus. She kept going every day to the shore to sit in her and her father's favorite spot. She tried her luck in fishing. She failed many times and succeeded a few. The fish she caught were small. They were barely enough to feed her family. One day, as she sat there, she saw a big fish coming closer to her and looking straight at her. Ramus was baffled by the fish. Little by little, Ramus moved closer to it, and to her surprise, the fish did not escape. She threw her net, caught the fish, and took off running to her mother, happy with her catch. Mother, mother, look at this fish, mother. MashaAllah, how were you able to catch it, Ramus? It swam to me by itself, mother. It's today's meal. In fact, the whole week's. <laughs> Asar took a knife and started to clean the fish, preparing it for cooking. Suddenly... Ramis? Come quickly, Ramis! Look, Ramis! What? What, mother? What? My grandfather's ruby!
Asar and Ramis found the ruby the pharaoh had taken from their family after he and his soldiers had drowned in the sea. Hatun's dream came true. His family lived a life of comfort, satisfaction, and belief. A life in which Ramis and her mother set a good example in kindness for the poor and the needy. Okay now, let us see who knows which prophet the author meant in this fictional story. Go ahead, Rowan. It's Allah's Messenger Moses alayhi salam. Alayhi salatu was salam. Very good, Rowan. Very good. And who knows how the Pharaoh drowned for the ruby to end up in the fish? Me, 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 please pick me. I have one answer, please. Go ahead, Ali. He drowned after the sea had closed on him. Good, Ali. Good, mashallah. If any of you wants to know what happened between Prophet Moses والسلام, and the Pharaoh, they should read it by themselves. For now, I think it's time for Maghrib. I think we should go. Ya Allah, let's go. Come on. Salat al-Maghrib. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Our lives for a day to come We're deeds till who failed and who will overcome So do all you can to live by Allah's command And a little giant you will be And a little giant you will be Be good to your parents and your days will turn bright Be true to your friends and guide them only to do right Earn the real treasure when you seek Allah's pleasure And a little giant you will be And a little giant you will be You don't have to be big to do a big deed You don't have to